one of my sales clients has sent me through their data for me to analyze and see how they're tracking. And the first thing I noticed when I opened up the spreadsheet was that they had their spreadsheet set up not the way that's ideal for Google Sheets. Now it's perfectly fine for Excel where you have different months in different tabs or in some cases in different sheets and then you can collate that all together. Google Sheets uses a more modern mindset where we disaggregate all of the data so we have everything in one tab and then from there we take out the bits to analyze from there. In the first half of this video we're going to see how we can combine all of the data from the different tabs, the different months and then we can analyze it from there. In the second half, we're going to see an even worse case where a client sends through a bunch of data in different spreadsheets and we'll combine all of that together and then again analyze from there. So let's take a look at what we've got. So we have here our spreadsheet and down the bottom you can see all of the different months spread through from January 2022 to February 2023. That's this month. Now, luckily, the clients have set up the same structure for every single month, so that's going to make our life easier. If the structure is different from tab to tab, then we'd have to first clean the data and then we could go ahead and combine them. So let's start off by creating a new tab. We'll put this right at the beginning. Let's double click this and call this our raw data. Off to the side, away from where any of the data will be populated, I'm going to put a list of all of the different sheet names that we have. Now, if we take a look down here, we don't have any information in column I. We do have some information after column J, but that doesn't actually matter for this project. So we're only going to be extracting this information here from columns A through to G. So over in column I, I'm going to put sheet names. And then I'm just going to write out all of the different sheet names. Now you could do it like this where you go through each uh, individual one and hopefully not make me any mistakes. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start with Jan, then Feb, and then just highlight both of these and drag it down because that will auto fill all of our dates. And then from there we can just put in 22 and that's going to copy that down all the way to December and then 23 for January and February. Now under the sheet name section, we can join these two together using the join function or if you want, you have text join, concat, concatenate, lots of different options or you could even just use a simple ampersand. The delimiter, I'm going to put nothing, so just leave it blank and then put a comma. The value or array is going to be J and K and you can see we get Jan 22 and I'm going to copy that all the way down. Now let's hold Control and C to copy and then Control Shift and V to hard paste. Now that pastes these in as values so they're no longer formulas and we can delete this information here. Now that we've deleted those we can use this area again for telling us where the data is held. So we can see here it's held from A2 all the way across to G and then it goes down probably a few hundred lines. So we have 200 lines here. So back in raw data that was in A2 to G and then press enter. And I'm going to copy that all the way down each of the different rows. And now let's join these two together and that's going to be our indirect reference. So let's say here, this is going to be our reference in column K and we'll use again join. Our delimiter in this case is going to be an exclamation mark. So we'll put that in between two uh, double quotation marks. The value or array is going to be these two cells here. And we can see we get Jan 22 with an exclamation mark and then A2 to G. It's asking us to autofill. I'm going to hit control enter on that to autofill all of these. So now we can reference these in our formula. So now that that's set up, we're going to go back to the beginning of the spreadsheet and start actually combining everything together. So the first thing I'll do is just copy and paste the titles or the headers from one of these um, tabs down the bottom. And then here I'm going to put an equals and we're going to start with a curly bracket and we'll use the indirect function. Now the indirect function says which cell do you want to pull from? And in this case we want to pull January 22, A2 to G. So I'm going to click on that. If we press enter we'll get an error and this error is just saying we need another curly bracket right at the end. So we'll end with a curly bracket, press enter and there's all of our data from A2 to G in January 22. Now the problem with this is it's pulling everything including all of this information down here, all of these blanks. So we have blanks down the bottom and it's actually bringing that information in. We don't want that information. We're just going to use a query outside of the curly brackets where 
column A is, oh, not A, column one is not null. And that looks exactly the same. So let's put a comma and then another indirect. And in this case, we'll use this one down here. Close that bracket. We've already got our closed curly bracket, press enter. And we get a ref function because I used a comma instead of a semicolon. So if we backspace on that, press a semicolon, semicolons put data below, commas put data across. Press enter and we can see all of the data is there. We have several hundred lines of data. Here's our February information. So we know that it's being, being pulled in. Now let's just go through and fill in the rest of it. I'm actually going to copy and paste this because I am lazy. So let's just copy this information here. Press control C. And then at the end, control V. How many lines have we got? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we need twelve of these. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Press enter. And there's all of our data. But this is only the data from January and February. So we need to go back into the formula and we're going to change each of these K values to K4, then K5, then K6, and so on, all the way through. And then in a moment, all of our data has now updated, and that's actually a lot faster than I thought it would, but we now have several thousand uh, columns here, several thousand rows of data from January all the way through to February 2023. Actually, we're missing February. I wonder where that is. Um, let's go right up the top. Did we bring in February? We can see that it's not highlighted at the bottom. So let's just add in one more. And that will be K15. We'll go right down the bottom and we can see that February has been input all the way up to the 21st, which is today's date. So that's how we can easily combine all of the data from multiple tabs into one single tab in Google Sheets, which we can then use to extract and analyze our information from there. Now it's much easier than Excel where we have to go through Power Query, which not everyone has access to. But let's put that aside. And if this information has been helpful to you, please let me know by leaving a comment down below and we'll jump into a new spreadsheet where we'll see how to combine data from different spreadsheets all into one, which makes our lives a whole lot easier. Let's close down this spreadsheet and we can see here in our data sets that Virtual Corp has sent us, we have all of the data for the different months within their own spreadsheets. Now this is definitely not ideal because it's going to take a long time to extract all of that information and put it into a usable form. So what we'll do is create a new spreadsheet and just like in the first half of the video, we'll combine these into a more usable way. So let's open up a new spreadsheet and now we'll just jump into one of these spreadsheets and we'll see what the information looks like. So information looks exactly the same and down the bottom we can see that the tab name is Jan 23 which is exactly what the title of the spreadsheet is. Now that's a little bit helpful but we still have a lot of work to do. Now off to the side here in column I just like before we're going to put in the sheet names for each of the different sheets that we've got coming in. Now in some cases it might just be called sheet one for every single one of the files but in this case they are named appropriately so we do have things like Jan 22, Jan, uh, Feb 22 and so on so I'm just going to stick with this method. I'll copy this down just like we did before. Let's join those together using the join function. Control enter to auto fill those. And then I'm going to highlight these control C and then control shift V so that these are now hard pasted and we can delete these cells over here. Now the little bit extra that we need to do for this spreadsheet, as opposed to what we saw last time is we need to go through and get all of the different URLs for each of these different spreadsheets. Now this is going to be rather tedious. It's going to take a little bit of time. The worst way you could do it is right clicking and then get link. Then you have to wait, click on copy link and then paste it in. We're not going to do that. Instead open up each of these and we'll have to do it individually. However, if you've got access to your Google Drive within your file explorer, then we can open them all up much easier. So let's just take a quick look at how that works. 
So I have here my file explorer and I'm going to go through to my um, virtual corp files. So that's under projects, wherever you keep yours. These are the my freelance projects. Then we have virtual corp and then we'll go jump into data sets. So these are all of the data sets and um, let's just go through and select all the ones that we're going to open and then press enter on them. And that will open up all of the spreadsheets a lot quicker than double clicking each one individually. So here we have September, 2022. So all we need to do is click on the URL at the top, press control C to copy, and then over here, paste this into the correct place. This one's September. I'm going to keep that in line with September. We'll close down September and move on to August, copy, paste the URL in. Now this is going to take a long time and will be very tedious, but it's important to remember that the structure and organization of the spreadsheet is key. Taking the time to communicate this to your clients upfront will not only make your job easier, but will also save them time and money in the long run. So don't underestimate the power of a well-structured spreadsheet. And finally, we have all of the different spreadsheets into this tab. So now that we have all of the URLs, we also have the tab names. And just like before, we want to know which cells we're choosing from. So in this case, it's A2 to G. Off to the side here, we have equals join, just like we did last time. The delimiter will be an exclamation mark to separate the tab name from the cell range. And then select these two. Press enter and we get exactly what we see there. Control enter on that. We're missing our A2 to G, so let's just copy those down. So this is the tab and cell range we want, and this is the spreadsheet that we want. So back over here in A2, let's again, just like before, we'll copy this information over. I'm going to bold that to make it a heading equals import range. Let's click on I2, put a comma, and then the range string is L2. Press enter and we can see loading and then a ref error comes up. Now this ref error says we need to connect these two sheets together. And as long as you have access to the other sheet, you can allow access to this sheet. So let's click on that and then click on allow access. And we can see the information automatically pops up. Now, just like we did last time, we'll put that in curly brackets. Let's put a semicolon and then another import range. In this case, the import range will be I3, and then the range string will be L3. Close that down, end with a curly bracket, press enter, and we can see a value issue. Now the value problem here is saying that we don't actually have access to this import range just yet. So first thing we have to do is access each one of these individually, and then we can apply them into this spreadsheet. So if we get rid of first one we already have access to that first sheet so that's good to go allow access to that one let's just go through and allow access to each one of these again a lot of tedium so this is why we want our structures set correctly before we get started So now we have all of our import range formulas. I'm just going to go back to import range and I'm going to select I2 and L2. We have all of our information there. Now from here, we could go through and copy and paste this several times. But what I'm going to do is a little trick to combine a whole bunch of information. We'll just drag all that down. Now we will get ref errors except for the last one. Why didn't I do that first? And I'm wondering why I didn't do that first. That would have been much smarter. But it is what it is. We now uh, can go through and we've checked that every one of these are now connected. So now we can go into this column, use formula text, and then select this range. Let's copy this down. Now we have all of our import ranges. We can use split to select this. 
and we're going to split it by an equal sign. So we get all of these import ranges just like that without any equals. And finally, let's use join. The delimiter is a semicolon. The array is this section here. Press enter and we get this whole string of text. Let's control C that. Control shift V to paste that in place. And now at the top we can see that we have all of our import ranges. It would have taken us a lot longer if we had copied and pasted this individually. So we can delete all of this information, move this over to A2. And then right at the beginning we'll start with an equals and then a curly bracket and right at the end another curly bracket to end it. Now if we press enter this might bring up a bit of an issue with uh, the size of the spreadsheet. You can see it was loading for a little bit of time there and if we scroll all the way down we have 14,000 rows. Now 14,000 rows is not a huge amount in Google Sheets but we can cut that down by using the query function. So let's enter the formula and then right at the beginning we'll use query, open a bracket and then we're just going to use all of the information here. At the end let's put a comma and then in double quotation marks we'll say where col1 is not null in double quotation marks. Press enter and we get all of this information. We can go right down to the bottom and we can actually delete all of this information here. We don't need it anymore. And there we go. We have all of the information copied from all of these different spreadsheets but now it's in a more usable format that we can then go ahead and analyze. Now the good thing about this way is if the client or whoever it is is using the same structure as before, so having these split into different spreadsheets, then we can just continue using this uh, structure. All we do is put in the next month. It'll still be A2 to G and then just copy that down, put in the new URL and then update the formula up the top. So this is sort of dynamic. We do have to do a little bit of work, but we can easily add extra information as we need it if the clients do not follow the structure that we prefer. So that's how we can combine different tabs and different spreadsheets all into one single spreadsheet, which is updatable. It's almost dynamic apart from just a tiny little bit of work, but it does make our lives easier because we can now go ahead and analyze all of this data and then give positive feedback to our clients or whoever is running the spreadsheets. Now, I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please leave a comment down below letting me know and I'll see you in the next video.